Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at constant equations. You can expect that we will have a mini lesson, some practice, and a little bit of application mixed into our practice. Let's get started. The constant equation is usually look, um, looks like this. Constant k is equal to y over x. But the fact of the matter is that's just a third of it. That's the part where if you're trying to find the constant, you would use this equation. But we can rearrange the same equation into three different forms. One part where you're trying to calculate the independent variable, x. And then a separate equation if we're trying to find the dependent variable of y. And these three equations are used in different ways. Throughout this lesson, I want to show how you would use each of these. And to do that, first off, I think we need to know a little bit about what the dependent versus independent variables are. So again, the constant here is the proportional relationship between the variables. The independent variable is the one that changes and it causes the other value to change. And we'll see examples of that. And each time I'll try and remind myself to say this. Say, look at how when this changes, it forces the other one to change. The dependent variable, y, um, depends on other criteria. So when the other criteria changes, it is forced to change. And when it changes, it doesn't necessarily in, like you can't make that one change and force the other one to change. And that will make a little bit more sense when I come to the first um, sample question. I drive my car 20 miles on a single gallon of gasoline. Woo! I need to identify the constant, independent, and dependent variables inside of this phrase here. So let's start off with the constant. The constant k is miles per gallon. It's a consistent proportion that doesn't change. It doesn't matter how many miles I drive, I'll still get 20 miles per one gallon. It's also called the unit rate. The independent variable is gallons. It can change. The number of gallons can change as much as it wants and it will force the dependent variable to change. The dependent variable is miles. The number of miles I can drive depends on how much gas I have. But the amount of gas I have does not depend on how many miles I drive. See how that works? One depends on the other. The other can change independently, and it doesn't really um, rely on the, on the first. In other words, I can fill up my gas tank, and that doesn't make me have to drive more miles. Um, but the amount I can drive completely depends on how much gas I have. So you can kind of see how that works. Let's look at um, another way to think about it is the word per. The word per means that there's a fraction, one thing divided by another thing. Ooh, look at that car. Our constant in this example is miles per gallon. Right, And we would write that as a fraction, miles divided by gallons. So if we think about that and look at our original equation, k is equal to y divided by x, we know that our independent variable will be in the denominator and our dependent variable will be in the numerator. Dependent divided by independent. That's one way of thinking about it. If you write it out in words, miles per hour. The miles depend on how many gallons of gas you have. Let's look at an actual question. And now that I've blown your mind with independent and dependent and wondering what is what, that's definitely a challenge. But let's go ahead and actually um, show how you would use these equations. I drove 81 miles in three hours. What's my average rate of travel? How far can I go in five hours? And how long would it take me to drive 243 miles? You can see I've color-coded these to match up with the equations. The first question. Oh, hey, there goes another car. Constant. 
is miles per hour. My rate of travel, k is equal to y divided by x. Miles divided by hours. So you can know by this equation that my miles is going to be the y value, my dependent variable, and hours are going to be my x value or the independent variable, just by the way we set this up. Anyway, let's go on. Um, 81 divided by 3 is equal to 27. So I am driving 27 miles per hour. That is my rate. That's a constant. It will not change. 27 miles per hour. I'm going to put that up there inside the, the green box. My dependent variable is miles. And I use this equation, y is equal to my constant value times the number of hours that I'm driving. All right? 27 times 5 gives me 135. That's how far I can go in 5 hours. I'm driving the constant rate of 27 miles per hour. We multiply that times 5 hours, and we get 135 miles. That's going to go right in there. My independent variable is how many hours I'm driving. Right? How many hours I'm driving, if I drive four hours, it forces the number of miles I've gone to change. Right? So this variable changes independently, and it causes the other one to change. And that one, the answer to that question, how long would it take me to drive 243 miles, is 243 divided by my constant, as you can see in the equation over here in this box your um, y value or miles divided by your constant is going to give you x which is your hours there we go let's try another practice question this one here is going to be a little bit different an airline sells four tickets for five hundred sixteen dollars what is the cost per ticket what is the cost for fifteen tickets and how many people can i take if i have seven hundred fifty dollars Let's get started. Number one, the constant K is the cost per tickets. So that means that I am putting cost up top and the number of tickets underneath. That also shows me what is my um, dependent and independent va um, variables just because of this equation. Remember, dependent variable is on the top of the constant, independent variable on the bottom. So cost per ticket, wow, $129 for each ticket. Total of $516 divided by 4, that'll give me $129. That's the constant. So I need that number to do the other equations. I need to know it's $129 per ticket. Next question. What would be the cost for 15 tickets? So if I'm looking at the cost for 15 tickets, that is the 15 or the, the constant, $129, times 15 tickets. The cost will always increase when the number of tickets increases. Do you see that? It depends on how many people are buying the ticket. So 129 times 15 gives me $1,935 to take 15 of my or 14 of my closest friends and me somewhere, wherever we're going. And the third question, how many people can I take if I have $750? This is finding out how many people, which is X, the number of tickets essentially that you're, you're buying. Um, and to do this, you will do division using this third equation. Your cost divided by the constant will tell you how many tickets you can purchase. I purposely did this question so that it did not match up. It didn't work out evenly. Your answer would be 5.814. Hmm. So I wanted, I did that on purpose to make us think about what's the question asking. Um, how many friends can I actually bring or how many tickets can I buy? If I have enough money for 5.8 tickets, I can only purchase 
five tickets. Do you see that? You can't purchase point eight of a ticket or take point eight of your friend on the plane with you, right? So we need to also be thinking about what exactly the, the question's asking. Our final question is an application question. You'll notice it has a table and a graph in it, and those come from previous lessons where we talked about determining if tables and graphs were um, represented a constant of proportionality. So you do need to know that, but I'll explain it as we go. Here's the question. The table and graph represent pay for two people working at a bookshop. Do these represent a constant of proportionality? What are their hourly wages? How much does Kaz earn in four hours? How long would it take Maggie to earn $37.50? Bookstore. So it comes down to that question. Um, what I'd like you to do is pause the video, try this one out, try and answer all four questions using, I color coded them so you can go ahead and use the equations that you see there on the right. Try it out and, and then come back. Are you back? Okay, let's look. First off, um, are these a constant of proportionality? A constant of proportionality with a graph means that it goes through the origin and it's a straight line. So we know Kaz's pay is a constant of proportionality. The other con um, table over here, you would have to do 1 or 1250 divided by 1, which would give you 1250. And then 25 divided by 2, which also gives you 1250. So you would need to see if they are proportional to each other, or if you get the same number when you divide them. And in this case, yes, you do. So we are good to go. Question number two, how, um, what are their hourly wages? We're going to use the green equation for that to find the constant. The constant is their pay per hour or dollars per hour. In the case of Kaz's graph here, you see that he works for two hours and gets paid $20. That is a constant of $10 per hour. We could also look at the graph um, in the position of one hour and look that it does make $10 for every one hour. We're going to now look at um, Maggie's work or over there. We're going to take 25 divided by 2. Again, that's dollars per hour, and you'll see that it's $12.50. Again, we could look one hour, $12.50, so we know that's the unit rate. That's how much she's earning per hour. So it's, it's literally written right into these graphs, the graph and table, but it's also good for us to do some math to calculate those. So their hourly wages are, as you see, CAS makes $10 an hour, Maggie earns $12.50 an hour. How much do they earn, how much does CAS earn in four hours? This is calculating the dependent, his pay. His pay depends on how much, how many hours he works. So that is how you would calculate it using the blue equation. The constant of $10 per hour times the four hours he works will give that Kaz is earning $40 in those four hours. Let's put that up there. And go to the third question. How long would it take Maggie to earn $37.50? You set it up in the equation as you see here. Her The money that she's making um, is equal to the, or I'm sorry, how many hours? We're trying to calculate the number of hours. It is equal to the amount of money divided by the constant, which is her constant of $12.50. She would have to earn work three hours to earn $37.50. There we go. So that was a lot. It was a long video. Um, this is our quick recap here. We have these three equations, one for finding the constant, one for finding the independent variable, and one for finding the dependent variable. I hope that you enjoyed that lesson and found something fun, exciting, interesting, and helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.